Good afternoon. I'm Professor Pat Murphy, co-chair of the Institute for Ethical Business Worldwide, and I'll serve as your MC for this afternoon. I'd like to welcome you all to the ninth annual Theodore M. Hesburgh Award for Business Ethics and the Frank Cahill Lecture in Business Ethics, co-sponsored by the Center for Ethics and Religious Values in Business and the Institute for Ethical Business Worldwide. Both Father Hesburgh and our recipients will be introduced shortly. We have a few guests that I'd like to uh, introduce. Uh, Audrey Griswinski, uh, Ron's wife, who came down from uh, Chicago today. Uh, Karen Weigert and Bill Dewey of Shore Bank, uh, and also Notre Dame alums, right, uh, uh, with us today. And uh, Kathleen Sweeney, who's here representing the Cahill family, uh, uh, South Bend uh, resident, uh, niece of uh, Frank and Marty uh, Cahill, and uh, uh, my wife Kate, who's uh, Father Hesburgh's chauffeur, uh, important role to play today's event. Uh, I'd like to recognize, I don't think she's in the room, uh, Deb Cook, our administrative assistant, who did much of the behind-the-scenes uh, planning for today, and I'm thankful for, uh, to Deb for all of her hard work. Just give you a brief outline of uh, what we're going to do in the next hour. Uh, I will start by introducing uh, Father Hesburgh, uh, and then Josh Koenig, uh, who nominated uh, Ron and Mary for this award, will introduce them. Uh, we'll have a few pictures here, and then I'll come back and tell you about the Cahill Lecture, and uh, Ron will deliver that, the social entrepreneurship and ethics in, in banking, and we'll have a short uh, a speech by Mary, and then we'll open it to uh, uh, Q&A, &A, questions and answers. So uh, let's start with uh, Father Hesburgh. The College of Business established the Hesburgh Award in the year 2000 in honor of Reverend Theodore M. Hesburgh, CSC. He was educated at Notre Dame and the Gregorian University in Rome, <coughs> excuse me, and he was ordained a priest in the Congregation of Holy Cross uh, in Sacred Heart Church uh, in 1943. Those of you that are good in math, you add uh, that together. This year he's celebrating 65 years in the priesthood. Congratulations, Father Ted. At the age of 35 in 1952, he was named the 15th president of Notre Dame and served in that capacity for 35 years until 1987. Since then, Father Ted has assumed his role as president emeritus and continued to serve Notre Dame as a senior spokesperson and goodwill ambassador. As most of you know, last May he celebrated his 90th birthday, and in fact, just one year ago today, April 22nd, 2007, he was saying a mass for our business students and uh, afterwards attending one of his many birthday parties. Since Pope Benedict was just in the United States, I think it's appropriate to mention that Father Ted has served four, year, four popes in his distinguished uh, years, three as a permanent Vatican representative for, to the International Atomic Energy Agency, he has held 15 presidential appointments over the years to commissions on civil rights, campus unrest, uh, third world development, and immigration reform, to name only a few. At the same time, he remained a national leader in the field of education, an achievement reflected by his more than 150 honorary degrees, and yes, he is in the Guinness Book of World Records for that. He is a recipient of the Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor bestowed on him by President Johnson in 1964, and the Congressional Medal of Honor was awarded to him by President Clinton and congressional leaders in 2000. In sum, he is considered by, by all to be one of the most influential figures in higher education in the 20th century. As many of you probably do not know, he was asked to sit on the board of directors at Chase Manhattan Bank by David Rockefeller and was the first priest to ever sit uh, on a corporate board. As he tells it, Rockefeller assured him that he didn't expect Father Ted to learn high finance or become an expert in it, but become the conscience of the board. And Father Ted has also been a confidant to many business leaders over the years. So it's appropriate that we recognize his leadership, service, and integrity with this award. I'd like to end with one of my favorite quotes of Father Ted that I think relates very closely to our recipients today. He said, my basic principle is that you don't make decisions because they are easy. You don't make them because they're cheap. You don't make them because they are popular. 
You make them because they are right. So I'd like to call up Josh Koenig, who will introduce and uh, uh, nominate, who nominated Ron and Mary to properly introduce them, and uh, we'll continue on. Josh? Good afternoon. Today I have the honor of introducing two individuals who are truly deserving of the Father Theodore Hesburg Award. Ron Griswinski, the Chairman of Shore Bank, and Mary Houghton, the President of Shore Bank. Our purpose today is to recognize and honor the work they have done in revitalizing economically disadvantaged neighborhoods and making the dream of business and home ownership possible for many people in those areas. Shore Bank began operations back in 1973 when Ron and Mary, along with two other entrepreneurs, purchased the South Shore National Bank in Chicago. The owners of the bank wanted to sell because of the quickly changing social economic conditions on the south side of Chicago. The community was transitioning from a middle class community to a troubled, poverty stricken community. At the time, economists and many others predicted that South Shore would become one of the worst slums in Chicago within five years. Many companies dis disinvested in this area because of this trend, but the South Shore Bank was not allowed to leave because of regulatory issues. Therefore, the bank was put up for sale and went unsold for two years. No banks or investment firms believed the bank had any chance of profitability because it was in a failing neighborhood. Finally, the group led by Ron and Mary purchased the bank with the idea that their core business could have a purpose other than just making money. They believed that an effectively run commercial bank could restore and strengthen neighborhood economies and be profitable as well. Because of this belief, they decided to take a chance and invest in a struggling neighborhood, and it paid off. The community of South Shore was revitalized, and the foundation was laid for the future success of Shore Bank.